Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome back to Transport Fever. We have plenty of passengers waiting to go. Uh, we have even more fuel and crude oil waiting to go. And in case you missed previous episode, I set up this new line, the Huntington Crude Line, which is transporting crude oil from this oil well over to Huntington, drops it off here at the refinery where it's refined into fuel. The fuel is then transported into Huntington Beach which should boost the amount of jobs which are available in Huntington Beach. Now aside from that, uh, we upgraded most if not all of the trams to the latest designs. Some of these things are even making a very small profit, but most of them are still just there to feed the trains. Talking of trains, at the moment all of my trains are making a profit. There is however one caveat here, and that's that some of these trains will need to get upgraded because the trains themselves are starting to get quite old. Especially trains 1, 2 and 4. So that's Denton, let's see, uh, Denton, Huntington is the northern line. East-West, or vice versa if you will. What do we have here? Oh wow, a Zephyr. Yeah, you're pretty old. Still, the Zephyrs, for their time, are still pretty damn fast. Well, provided they can, provided they can get up to that speed. Why are they not doing any faster? The power reading is only mediocre, but surely they can go faster than sixty on those lines. Yeah, we're gonna have to look into that. Now, as for passenger demands on this line, this train can. Yeah, it can deal with the passengers that are waiting here. We're going to have to look into a different train. Because this one's getting really, really old. Okay. Um, it's a pretty short hop. But I would like those trains to make a bit more speed as they're going from one end to the next. The EMD AME AEM7 can do that for 11.7 .7 million. That's going to go at 200 kph. This one, let's see, tractive effort, 240 kilonewtons, 151, 3, sorry, 483, but this is far slower. This is more of a cargo line. 160. We still have the uh, Speedens Express for 36 million. That's far too expensive. Metroliner at 193 would be an interesting solution. Pay of a tiny bit of our debt. Would be an interesting solution, but they are, well, <laughs> slightly out of my budget for the moment. As they're going to cost me 16 million each. So we're going to have to slowly ramp up production and hope that this is going to eventually pay out. This episode, what do I want to focus on? I would say fast gains. Uh, Gainesville Patterson, come to think of it. See, there used to be only 60 people waiting here. Now there's 170. This line might be good for upgrading. Just adding one more car to that. And the line is making me, as a whole, about 380k a year. I expected a bit more. Yeah, let's add one car. So, replacements, uh, these things at least are getting up to their full speed, 105, and they are sure to get in there. Okay, so, something faster would be this one, or of course that one. See, if I'd have money to burn, and a large cash buffer, I could easily use the replace now feature. But that's not quite going to be capable with this line. Because I simply do not have the cash buffer. I would really like to start upgrading to the HHP. It's very expensive. But these things, they have some tractive effort. And they can haul a lot of passengers across. Let's go for something a little bit more realistic now. 
Let's say I want that one. Uh, the bombardiers can go 140. These can go 201. Uh, this one can go up 113. Ah, I want faster. 200. That's going to be the ideal. So, in order to keep with vehicles that can actually sustain that, that's not going to be a uh, the Bombardier. It's not quite going to be the American Gold Sand. It's going to be the West Rail West Fleet. Uh, no. <laughs> 19 million apiece. Okay. Holy crap. Let's pay off a bit more. 19 million apiece. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're not going to get up to that level anytime soon. Let's see, how's Gainesville doing? Fuel... Uh, not bad. Not bad. Alright, let's keep repaying. Come on, a little bit into December. I want a bit more... Alright, 2.41. Let's see if we can pay off that loan eventually. Because then profits would slowly, slowly, slowly start to build. As for right now, I don't see any short-term opportunities for profits. For massive profits, that is. Anything that's going to immediately get me a ton of money. We're just slowly building out the transport capability on all ends. Which seems to be working, but the amount of people waiting here is starting to go up significantly, especially uh, Gainesville Patterson. 150 people waiting there for a train that only seats 66. So there's definitely more profitability to be made there. Again, if I manually add another unit, another, that's going to cost me 1.8. And the trains themselves... Oh, they're 11 years old. They're relatively young. So they should be fine. Now, keep checking the lines. Balance. Minus 300k. He probably hasn't arrived yet. There we go. Now he made a profit. So it's just the trams that are costing me money. And the loan. The 2.41 million loan interest that I'm paying every year. But then again, paying off 96 million is going to take forever. These trains... 190k. That is such a tiny margin. Alright, let's see if we can get enough money this year to add one passengers uh, or one passenger car to a train like that because the replacement feature yeah <laughs> I'm not likely to get 11 million out of the blue unless some sort of rich uncle dies but then I don't believe that transport fever has that feature at the moment We're going to need one point... what was it? 1.9. See, these are the moments in Transport Fever that you can easily get bored. Because there's just not a whole lot to do right now. All you can do is sit back and wait. And hope that you eventually make a profit that's small enough or that's large enough to actually get one or two more vehicles added to your lines. And that's about it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that vehicle this year. So let's focus on repaying a bit of the loan. 290k this year. It's not as good as last year. In fact, we made far less. We made only one-fourth? How did that happen? And see, this is only saving me 100,000 a year. Uh, 
Um, yeah, let's ramp it back up. Oh, really? I don't have enough? I need 1.9. Come on. There we go. Hold, hold, hold. If you can, go to the depot. Can you? Yes, he can. Perfect. Alright, buy a train. We're going to add another bombardier. And you're going to go right back onto your line. That will have cost me the profits from one haul of passengers, but so be it. We'll have to make do for now. And I'm going to start doing the same thing to the other train. Let's see if your power rating's still good. Oh, it's just dropped to mediocre. So be it. Still plenty of people waiting. And I might be able to do the same thing with the other train. <clears throat> if profits are decent. This thing just got a 30% boost in its transport capability. I wonder if we're going to be seeing a 30% boost in its profitability as well. That's probably not entirely reasonable to expect. Because of course the Bombardier also costs me a bit of uh, money each year. 315k. So I hope my passengers are willing to pay good money in order to get from that town to the other town fast. Well, fast. At about 100 kph. Ish. Most of the time they seem to be able to get up to that speed. Alright, what do you get for one haul of 99 passengers? 300k. You need to go to 1.63 a million a year. You're waiting quite a while there, aren't you? Get your people on board and get out. No waiting. So this thing's making very, very tiny margins. 200k, not even that. I wonder if train 6 is going to be doing any better. 1.55, hold. We can upgrade this one. Go back to your depot. Let's buy one right now. Okay. This one just arrived. Of course, because I pulled it off of the line for a little bit of time, it's not going to make me as much this year. And <laughs> let's pay off whatever we can. Because January is right around the corner. Mm, 12 days. 10 days. Come on. Keep mashing that button. Oh, I'm done. Narrowly. Oh well. So this train last year cost me a half a million. Again, I'm attributing that to the fact that he didn't run all the time. Part of the time it was still waiting to get back onto the line. But at least it's consistently, well mostly, running full. There's plenty of people waiting there. How about the other side? Uh, just about. The tram stations don't have that much. We can still upgrade the uh, production for fuel a little bit. And it's now looking at minus 240k. Is it running full? Close enough. This one's definitely running full. I could possibly, if I had the money, add one more train to that line, or even two, just to keep more passengers going on that line. How's this one doing? Not bad. That means that there should be getting more jobs over here. Barely! 
I think we started out around 7.30-ish. So it's not really doing that well. That's unusual. And Huntington Beach doesn't have that much terrain or that much public transport usage in the first place. 28% only. Show me the lines that are going here. It's just two trains. Yeah, Denton and Patterson. And they're probably not arriving often enough. There's not enough trains going here to make it interesting to wait for one. Instead, people are probably driving. Unfortunately, the game doesn't quite show you stats like those. Okay, made a modest profit. Well, past tense mostly. Oh yeah, Gainesville is making money again. Good. Here comes another bit of cash. Half a million. I'm not sure if this campaign or this save game is going anywhere. Well, put it like that. Because while we are making a profit, it's not nearly going as fast as I want it to be. Uh, by contrast, I have another save game where I started in 1980, sorry, 1800. Um, and that one is actually doing quite well. It has made me... Uh, or I have created lines there which are making me about a couple of million, and I think 10 to 20 million a year. Those are not these short lines, those are the longer lines. So let's say a line that's going uh, Denton, Gainesville, Laredo, Patterson. A circle line like that. So I have one going in a circle and the other one circling back. This one, the way that I have it set up in this game, allows me to fine tune what trains I have and what trains need upgrading a little bit more easily. With the caveat that, of course, every train line is going to need its own engine. Whereas if you have one larger circle, you can easily um, have a few trains running on there which are 100 to 200 people. And that does potentially make you more money. So, I could try and do something similar in this game. It's going to be a massive overhaul though. I could keep this line, that one right there, and have all the other trains run in a circle. So let's say the outer lines of the circle are Denton, Huntington Beach, Laredo, and Hollywood. Then we're going to have a few going uh, clockwise and a few going counterclockwise. It's going to require a little bit of an overhaul of my train sections, or at least my, uh, my tracks. But I think I can make do. If I have enough money for that. And it might salvage the game. Might. Hmm. Let's try that because we're not really going anywhere with this game anyway. Split off the line. What do you mean we cannot split off the line? Aside from the money issue, that is. Construction not possible. We're going to have to delete that section, probably. Otherwise, it's not really going to work out. Every now and then I have a bit of money, and then it immediately gets eaten up by something. Wait, one. Okay, so that's the first bit. Um, of course, right now all my trains are going to be <coughs> royally pissed off with the fact that they can no longer get to their intended target. That means I'm going to have to do this pretty quickly. Delete a little section here. 
Come on. All the way over to this train station where we have... Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. Well, it can be done. Rain alignment collision, as well as the buildings which are starting to get in the way. If I wanted to just take this thing here, no, terrain alignment collision. Still, I want this to happen. Delete that. No, not that window. Damn it, the terrain alignment is going to be a real challenge here. Could I do it here? Eh, maybe. If I take it in small sections, will the game understand? Is it the bridge? Holy crap. Oh well. Make do. Yep, that's it. Okay. Then we end up over here where we're going to have to make a bit of a change here. Equalize those lines. Connect this one here and that one over here. Don't split them up. Why do we have that? Oh, there's a depot. I was wondering why we had that many lines over there. Alright, almost done. They're going... Oh! Okay. Uh, this is going to be an interesting train station, of course. Because it's uh, pretty much a folding point. Mm, it can be done. Trains are going to come in here and then have to... They're going to have to make their way to one of these stops. Uh, let's see if this works. First up. Oh, actually, it's not connected even. Let's do that first. Sorry, I'm just rambling. It's not my usual way of doing things, but... Then... Can we make another line here? No. Too much curvature. Alright, let's redo that section. Trains are going to be coming in from the west. One is going to be heading this way. What do you mean construction is not possible? And you're going to continue on there. You're going to come in from here. Does this work? It fits. That's a <laughs> that's a big win. The trains are going to have to figure that out all by themselves. Alright, and then finally over here. Can we tie it in there? We can. However, it'd be easier if to take the leftmost lines. Yep. have to come in here and you're gonna have to line up and go over there but of course you're colliding because you're too close and yeah that's gonna be expensive deal with it
Okay, that should conclude the overhaul. Let's see if I can build a line. So we're going to have one line starting over there. Going here. South. Yeah, I know they're not connected. Here. Station 1 and 4 are not connected. Oh, really? And what if I... Station 5 and 1 are not connected. Could not connect all the stations. Okay. So it's going to be a problem somewhere in the middle. I think Laredo is the issue here. Is this train station... Aha! Yeah, I didn't fix that one yet. That's the problem right there. I didn't fix that one. Okay. So now we know where the problem is. I'm not going to be using this train line just yet. So we're going to delete it. Delete that. Really? This is pretty much double or nothing. If this doesn't work, then I'm screwed. Okay, now it's connecting. You go over there. You go here. And you go over there. Okay. Let's make it dark so I can easily see it. That's one. Uh, we're going to call this the, let's say, circle clockwise line. So this is circle line. And then one going back. Station types. Oh, Spruce Street. Damn it. This is why I should have zoomed in. Denton? No, we're not going to start at Denton. Wait one. We're going to start here. I want you to be yellow. Contrasting the other one. They're not interfering. That's good. You go to Gainesville. Why are you not going to Gainesville? Going to Hollywood, Laredo, and Patterson. However, aha. I was afraid it was going to pull something like that. I think that the other line is going to be the problem. The circle line. Yeah, you see the circle line should be running on the right side of the track, not the left side of the track. And that means that we have an issue somewhere. Still running on the right side. Where is it? Hmm. If I tell it to split here, would that help? Well, not really. Uh, terminals. What exactly is the issue here? It could be over here. See, I wanted not to take this particular section. Yes, this is the problem right here. That's it. Well, mostly. Oh. See, the issue here is that there should be one line going north. That's the... Uh, the right side of the track. The other one should be going south. Right now, 
the circle line, so that's the black line, seems to think it needs to go on the left side of the track. Over here, it is going the right way. So at some point, it decides to merge. And it decides to join in on the wrong line. I'm just going to follow it home. Where is that split? We're actually not the split. Where's the joint? And here it is. Okay, so that didn't quite fix it. Rather the opposite. That might have to do with that other joining that I did somewhere. It's still the black line. Focus on the black line. I could tell it to manually focus on a waypoint. Uh, waypoint. So that after Huntington, I want you to be here. Could not connect. There we go. Why can you not connect from Huntington Beach to the waypoint? That's interesting. Alright, after Huntington... Go here. Now can you do it? Now we can do it. After Patterson, go to Laredo. Still works. After Laredo, go here. Still works. After Laredo, aha. And here we have an issue. Gainesville. See, I never designed these train lines to be doing just this. So that's probably going to be an issue. And I think that the main pain point is up here. Because let's see, a train's going to be coming in from here. And then it goes, okay, I need to go back. If I add another split here, that might sort itself out. Yep. Does the yellow line now work? Yes, there we go. That's the only thing that I needed to do. They are, for some reason, taking up one specific section of uh, the track. That's probably because I don't quite have these others set up properly. They don't need to use one terminal. And it may have to do with the fact that they cannot quite get here. Can we fit it in? Too much curvature, I was afraid you are going to say that. It's just entirely ignoring that section. Why is the construction not possible? See, the yellow line could use its own terminal. Come on. What if I delete this section here? Still not quite working the way I'd hoped. They're all using terminal 3. Train comes in from here. Okay, so <laughs> now it works. Sort of. Fighting the AI of the game. And then it's 
Yeah, now it screws up again. Now the black line is also going to be causing an issue. Alright, we're going to have to focus or figure that out later. For now, we're going to have to reassign these trains. You're going to be on the circle line. You're going to be on line one. Uh, oh, actually, Gainesville Patterson needs to stay intact. You're going to be on the circle line. You're going to be on line one. Laredo Patterson is going to be on the circle line. So now we have three trains there, three trains there. I wonder. This is going to cause all sorts of incidents very, very quickly. Train 10, for example, immediately starts to complain, I don't know where to go. I cannot really blame him. Because his, <laughs> his entrance and his exits just got cut off. I imagine that could be a problem. Fortunately, the solution is rather easy, provided I have money, which I don't. I just need to build one section for 6,000. That's all. Come on. Boom. Now you can go. And he never needs to revisit that section again. Okay, your circle line, so you're on the black line. Now the other one. Uh, there's going to be the circle line counterclockwise. We're going to need to upgrade these trains significantly. But because these trains are going to be doing far, far greater distances, that means that we're going to be able to send those fast trains on these tracks. At least, that's the plan. Sending out the fast trains. And uh, it's going to take a while before we get to that. For now, let's just let it roll for a bit and see if it works. See, the circle line and the counterclockwise line are being used. I need to make sure that people know that the other lines are gone. They're dead. So that's this one. Huntington Beach Patterson is done. Burrito Hollywood is done. Gainesville, dead. You're dead. And you're dead. We really only have a very, very few amount of lines at the moment. Yep, so now people are queuing for the line that they really want to be taking. And of course, when the passengers are starting to get used to these lines, or well, that's going to take time for them to realize, hey, um, that train that I was originally intending to take is no longer there. So we're going to have to switch to a different line. And the trains are probably going to have to sort themselves out as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm going to be in the red for at least a year or two. As these trains are starting to make their way towards the new lines and figuring out everything all by themselves. Let's see how we're doing. Minus 4 million. And that's without any construction costs this year. And we're not even halfway through. Still though, some of these trains, such as this one, just came in, made me 400k. That's not bad. Of course, these things are getting old. <laughs> 41 years old at that. Patterson Hollywood? Oh, that's the direct line. You're not supposed to exist anymore. Uh, you're gonna go on the circle line, the yellow one. Because then we have three and three. Minus four million. Whew, this is gonna get painful. And I suppose that he can switch to the yellow line eventually. How are the other train lines doing? Uh, Huntington Crude still making a marginal profit. And that's just about all you can say. People waiting here. 139 for the circle line, 101 for the counterclockwise. Let's see what happens in 2019. And that's going to be the last year for this episode. 
I wonder what sort of losses I'm going to be running then. And keep in mind that while originally trains used to be coming in every two minutes or something like that, now they're coming every five minutes. So people are going to be uh, slightly annoyed with the fact that their standard train is no longer running according to the schedule. Minus seven million. I could have just doomed this whole save game. That might be what I just did. Alright, 2019. That's the year we're in now. February. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Because if this does work, and I can start to upgrade the trains, and get more trains running, this might just save the save game and get me the profits that I need to start repaying the loan and start to get more trains up, etc, etc. Alright, currently we're still looking at minus 3.3, 3.26, 25, slowly but steadily. It's not unusual for us to be negative halfway through the year. It's just usually not that much. Not 2.85 million. Let's see, can we... Can we crawl back from the abyss? Yes or no? Minus 3 million. It's already better than last year, when it was minus 4.5. It's only June so far. See, there's no shortage of passengers, that's for damn sure. There's tons and tons and tons of passengers everywhere. How are the trains doing? Balance, negative. Negative, negative, negative. One of the circle lines is making a profit. Yeah, they both are. Minus 3.6. We're in September now. 3.3. 3.29. Hmm. 3.7. 3.1. Of course, I still have the issue of my trains getting too old. And with that, minus 2. Minus 1 point... Oh, never mind. With that, the trains are going to increasingly get more expensive to run. The running costs are going to go up a lot. That is going to chew into my profits. And if I cannot do anything about that, then we're doomed. Because I cannot suddenly pull more and more profits out of thin air. Unfortunately. December comes around minus 2.53. So that's 2 million less losses than last year or than the 2018 fiscal year. So while it's not great, it's not as bad as I'd expected. Anyway, this is where I'm going to stop the episode. Um... I'm not sure if there's going to be a next one. I think I might do one more. And if the situation doesn't vastly improve by then, then this just might be the end of it. Because I do not feel like watching 30 minutes and hoping that my numbers are going to tick up into profits so that I can start to either replace trains or upgrade them. Uh, it's going to take a while. So I might decide to play a bit of this stuff off screen get a bit more money in, and then we're going to pick it back up. But then again, let me know what you want to do about that down in the comments. Looking forward to your comments as well, seeing how you would handle the situation. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.